Zoolander and Meet the Parents, when I got involved, the talent was involved. Um, so I knew who I was writing for. Yeah. You know, and that, that changes things because you have their voices in your mind. And, uh, and then we, you know, you work with them a lot. You write and they read it and you go back and forth. Like, I love you, man. You know, I wrote not knowing Paul Rudd and Jason Segel were going to play the parts, but then I finished the script and immediately wanted those guys. And then we spent a while, you know, punching up the script, going over it, and I revised it. And then Why Him was the same thing where uh, Ian, my co-writer, and I didn't know who we were going to go to, you know, for uh, for Ned and, and Laird. But as soon as I finished working on it with Ian, you know, I wanted those two guys. And then that began a whole process of sitting in this office, basically, with James and Brian, um, you know, going over it and really really revising the script pretty significantly, actually. James had a really specific thought, which was, he was like, I can do all this outrageous stuff, but I, my drive needs to come from this vulnerable, relatable place. And he's like, the more you can put in that I really want to win that over because I never had a family and I want a family. You know, I, I'm happy to go to all these lengths. In fact, I encourage it. But um, if I can have that as a through line, that will help me as an actor, and I think it will help the story. Even when he does something crazy, like tattoo a holiday card in his back, yes. it's all motivated by he just wants to win over her parents. It, it, it's that original James motivation, yeah. um, which is I want I want these people to love me, and you know that's where he's so talented and had such a good instinct about the character, and the tattoo was his idea. I mean that's another good <laughs> example, you know, where I at least the tattoo he wanted a tattoo of her on his chest. I can't remember. It was probably his idea to do the Christmas card. I can't remember. Maybe, maybe we pitched it to him. I don't remember. But, um, but I know that there was no tattoo until James said, "I think I should have a tattoo," you know, of maybe it was her or of the whole family on my body. He's so talented and smart, and has such a great sense of story that he wanted to know that the character would start one place and end at another place. And of course, Ian and I had worked a lot on on Ned's arc, but he helped push us to a whole new level. And, you know, so we incorporated a lot of those thoughts. And then even things like there's a fight in the end of the second act of the movie that wasn't in the original script. And those guys were like, let's get, you know, we should express our conflict and frustration at each other in this physical altercation. And they didn't, you know, say this is how we want to do it. They just pushed that to us. And then Ian and I, it's our job, you know, to figure it out and make it fresh and original and funny. You know, you mentioned sort of having the actors in your office and, yeah. and riffing and, you know, experimenting. So when that's going on, are they sort of performing for you and you're kind of transcribing? Or is it just sort of, you know, them sort of throwing ideas? It's a combo. Fun? I mean, a lot of times, you know, actors go, look, I don't want to read it. You know, I'm not going to perform it. But they can't help themselves because that's what they do. That's who they are. So you're reading and suddenly, pretty quickly, it gets up to almost performance level. Um, and yeah, we are, sometimes I'll have like a writer's assistant in here transcribing if, you know, great improv is coming out that Ian and I will then put into the script. Or, you know, I'll make notes, director's notes. So on the day, I'll remember this little improv they did. Even if it doesn't make it into the shooting script, I'll have my little notes and throw out that idea because it was great and funny. It's just we don't have time to put it into the actual scene, uh, you know, on the page. There's a script that we spent a long time working on, but then there is a ton of improv and a lot of stuff that comes up on the day, in the moment, and that, you know, it's undeniable, and that's one of the things I love about making these kind of movies, you know, where you you don't know what you're going to get, you know, it's it's a high wire act sometimes because you, you know, you're watching the scene unfold and you go, as a director, I'm just going, that's not quite good enough, you know, it's not funny enough yet, and then I might throw you know out an idea, or the actors will pitch me something, or just say a line unexpectedly, and then the scene shifts in a totally different direction. That happened frequently during uh, during the making of Why Him. We work so hard on the script; we want it to be as good as possible. But then there's a whole other thing that happens when you get brilliant actors and brilliant crew people. You know, everybody suggests ideas, and you know, it, it's my job to just be totally open to the moment. Um, and find stuff. And so I kind of forget that I'm a writer when I'm directing. Of course, I can always rewrite on the set or having Ian Helfer on this one. You know, he and I can huddle together and rewrite. But then it's like you got to just be in what's actually happening in front of you. And if it's not the way you heard it in your head, 
maybe that's better. You know, maybe it goes in a totally different direction and you might find something unexpected. And you know, that's kind of what we're looking for in these movies, these unexpected moments. Can you ever imagine making a movie where you're sort of like sort of trapped in the script in a way? Or you know like that working with the actors, experimenting, trying it different ways is really what yeah. you kind of find the movie. Yeah, you know, I my early movies, uh, Safe Men, which is my first movie, which is like a cult kind of movie, um, is totally scripted. You know, I don't think there's maybe one or two lines. You know, I mean, a bit, but like basically Very it's on script. Word, it's yeah. just about word for yeah. word. Um, Along Came Polly, pretty word for word. I mean, some improv, but not a heavily improvised movie. Um, you know, and that's its own style. I'm, I Those are two... Um, movies that you know I'm proud of that I made uh, but then I just started to understand how improv can help uh, these movies particularly R-rated movies where there's no you know ceiling on what you can do and um, and see it as my tool that can that can you know just make the movies funnier and more real and it really started on I Love You Man that was the one where I think I took all these things I was thinking about um, and put them into practice on that movie and it was so much fun to make and so alive to me. You know, the tone, it felt like a tone I'd wanted to achieve for a while. And I feel like we got there for me personally. I, you know, hopefully audiences agree, but that's how I felt. And so there was sort of, I was like, this is, I love this. And then I took that on to why him. Each actor works differently. So you have to figure out what their strengths are. I mean, that's my job. And having done this for like, shockingly, like 20 years now, you know, you just get better at saying, okay, you learn pretty quickly. Like, this person's a genius at improv and that's where they're gonna to come to life. This person is just better on the page and so let's make that work. Um, and you can have two people in a scene who work totally differently, you know, and one person is improvising and sometimes it's fun to have the other person, you know, just they're trying to stay in the thing uh, and, and it works. You get all this sort of tension in, the, in that moment. Um, on this movie, I mean, I cast mainly people that I knew would be adept at improv. Um, I mean, Brian, hadn't done that much of it in the past. You know, Breaking Bad is like, I'm pretty much, I think what's on the page is what you're saying. And, and you know, the dramas he'd been doing recently in film and TV, but he was so good at improv and so quick. And that I knew he would be. Um, and then you have, of course, Franco, who had worked on these Seth Rogen comedies, so I knew he would be good in that respect. And then Megan Mullally, who's just an insanely funny, gifted comic actress. She gets high and tries to seduce Brian Cranston. Um, you know, turned out to be one of my favorite scenes in the movie. And that wasn't in the original draft. And Megan pitched, you know, she's like, I feel like what if I'm trying to seduce him? She didn't give us the exact scene, but it was like, she gave the notion. And we lit, you know, we also heard a table read and we were like, Megan is so funny. We've got to do more with her. King and Michael Key, who's like one of the great improvisers of all time, basically, that I've ever worked with. Uh, and, you know, and then this whole supporting cast. So I definitely picked people that I thought could play in that sandbox. But on some other movies, you know, I'd have Paul and Jason on I Love You Man who are brilliant improvisers, a couple other people that just wasn't their strong suit, but you kinda, that's okay. You know, you just kinda make it work. And then other people who weren't that good at scripted, um, they came to life when you said, all right, try it, just try something totally different. And uh, suddenly the entire scene came to life. I mean, we had written this Gustav character. Um, and we love the idea that he, you think he's one thing, you know, but it turns out that he's so much more. You know, you think he's this, is he an estate manager or, you know, what is, you know, is he like the guy that, you know, runs his house like in Downton Abbey, you know, one of these type of guys. But then it's like, you know, James is this, he's a child in a way, you know, he's, no one's ever raised him properly. So Gustav, on the page, you know, was was sort of this sensei, life coach, uh, parkour trainer. And then um, when Keegan got involved, same thing, we sat in this office and went over it, and it's like, he brings so much to it. I mean, I think you need a strong script. You know, you need, an, you need those arcs need to be figured out. You can't figure those arcs out in improv. There's some people work with like an outline that's really yeah. streamlined, but for yeah. you feel like having that foundation you know, yes. Really yeah, I need the strong foundation, and you try to write great lines. I mean, you, you know, I mean, some of the lines that I've written in my career that are better known, some were improvised by the actors, or or through the collaboration. Some were scripted. You know, 
but you certainly try to write the funniest, best script um, possible. You know that that yeah that feels really important to me. I mean, although I'm open, you know, like I love curb your enthusiasm, you know, which is an outline, you know, and then of course improvised. Um, but so maybe something I'll do in the future will have more of an outline. But I, I some people I think rely too much on that. Like it, you have to be Larry David yeah, and be. Sometimes you can tell like people are just kind of way off the cuff. Yes, <laughs> yes. There's there's two. There's now a lot of projects, and because of we can shoot on digital, you know, where you don't have to waste film. There's a lot of, I'd say there's a lot of not so good improv. Um, it's just the masters like Larry David or Judd, um, you know, or it's like Christopher Guest that can yeah. really so make like it sing. have more of an idea of how a scene is structured. So you can That's right. Get all the beats down. Or That's right. Yeah. yeah, I think you need that that story structure and the rhythm of longer form storytelling to really make that, uh, to make it sing. Yeah, nowadays you, you go to some movies and it's like, <laughs> I see what you're trying to do but you're not getting there. But um, but when it works well, it's, you know, I don't know why, it's funny, my favorite comedy growing up was Spinal Tap. And I kind of knew it was improvised but I didn't quite understand what that meant at the time. So I didn't, uh, you know, it took me till I was a bit older to kind of incorporate that style into my filmmaking. But why him takes place in a, this sort of surreal Silicon Valley world where, you know, there are no limits. Um, so we took a long time working with our production designer and, you know, location manager to figure out where the house was going to be. And then we brought in a lot of James Franco's original artwork. Um, really? Yeah, so he actually <laughs> painted, there's a lot of art in the movie, all the humping capybaras and fat squirrel, uh, you know, stuff like that. That, that's James's work and we hung it around the house and it's perfect because it's like, it is very modern art and it's cool and it's there also to put Cranston's character, you know, to be off-putting to him, which, which I think it, it succeeds in doing.